my friends, welcome back to another musical moment in the life of the old time rock and roller. Today's special will be one voice to the voice. And what I mean by this is my friend Steve Perry has millions of fans and I've compiled hundreds of comments from his followers that I put together in a multi-part series so we can all let Steve know some of the ways that he's made our lives better, some of the favorite concerts, albums, songs, meetings, and so forth. So this is going to be a very exciting series for all of Steve Perry's fans and for Steve to watch. So without further ado, here we go. Today's first comment is from Denise Paul. And Denise writes, There, when Journey was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Magical just to see him. Missing you. That's from the Love of Strange Medicine album. Also, Still They Ride, Foolish Heart, and It's Just the Rain. I think Trial by Fire is my favorite album. No, I never saw them in concert. I was young and into Boy George. My mom put me on to Steve. Now as an adult, his music resonates with me. Plus, he has a good heart. I hope that helps his song, When I Think of You. It helps me when I'm grieving the loss of my youngest brother. Anyway is another masterpiece. I need to stop. <laughs> I did go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction here in Brooklyn. The crowd roared when Steve spoke. Sadly, he didn't perform, but just being there was amazing. They almost threw me out because I kept screaming his name through the entire evening. That had to be a great experience, Denise. Thank you for your comment. This comment is from Denise Van Velsen, who is a huge Steve Perry fan and supporter. I'm in charge of publications as well as one of the admins in our group, SPL. Our teams do a lot of research and activities that revolve around concerts and videos. Our group is one of the groups working very hard to get Steve to receive the Kennedy Center Honor Award. I love Infinity, Raised on Radio, Trial by Fire, and For the Love of Strange Medicine. I've got many songs that are my favorites. I'd have to say the song that touched my heart the most came around the time that I needed it the most, and that was the lead song off TBF, the song Trial by Fire. If we're looking at solo albums, it would have to be For the Love of Strange Medicine and the song Somewhere There's Hope. Both songs are for deep reasons that when I heard them, I don't think I appreciated them as much as I do today because I'm where I'm currently at in my life. But that's the beauty of music. It can mean something to you at the time it's written or performed, as Steve mentioned. Then later on, it will hit you again and you'll have a completely different meaning based on a story or a life event. For instance, the song Trial by Fire is part of my life's testimony, which is followed by Somewhere There's Hope. I honestly can say that I could sit and look at the repertoire of songs that Steve has written, performed, either solo or journey, and find a different meaning and connection to my life. I asked my 12-year-old grandson yesterday, as we were listening to Journey. Is there a bad Journey song? He said, no, so long as Steve Perry is singing the song. I agree. Even though this song wasn't written by Steve and the guys, I do like the song, Why Can't This Night Go On Forever. His voice on that recording is amazing. 
The words are powerful. My grandkids like open arms and faithfully. Without going into full detail publicly, I was going through some pretty rough personal struggles. With that song playing in the background, a rack of essential oils, and a quote from my pastor all played a vital role in completely turning my way of thinking and my life around. From that, I dove deeper and deeper into the music of Journey the stories in the songs, and of course, Steve's emotional delivery. It's something that I had not done before that particular moment in time. That's when I began discovering the fan groups and realizing how many more people were out there with some of the same similar stories. I wasn't allowed to go to concerts when I was younger. It wasn't until I was considered an adult that I went to concerts. By the time I was able to make my own decisions, I was deep into my own relationships and beginning a family. Unfortunately, I never did get to see Steve with Journey. I did see them a few years ago with Arnell. I had a couple of moments where I may have been able to meet Steve Sadly, that has not come to fruition yet. The music will live on in my heart forever. Thank you very much for that comment. These comments are from Linda Sanchez, a great fan of Steve's. I love so many of his songs, including It's Over, If Only for the Moment Girl, and With Journey, When You Love a Woman. I became a fan of Steve's late in life, even though when my four kids were teens, I listened to whatever they listened to. I never went to any of his concerts or met Steve. However, meeting him is number one on my bucket list. My number one playlist is Steve and or Journey with Steve. Yes, your song It's Over is on there. Yay! I have turned one of my young co-workers into a Steve Perry fan. Thank you for that, Linda. This next comment is from Becky Gooden. I saw Journey and Steve in the early 80s. All three times were in Houston. I was at the live taping in 81 also. The concerts were magical. Even in the enormous Astrodome, his voice and heart soared all around us. There are just way too many songs to say which are my favorite. His voice. Those songs were the soundtrack of my youth. Even with Traces at 58, those songs fit all I've been through in the past few decades. If he realized the miles and miles of travel in a small town in Texas, we traveled from high school to college to the birth of my daughter in 1988. I knew he would grin big. Anytime I hear his voice, I become once again that small town girl living in a lonely world. Even now, at age 58, his voice, his lyrics have touched so many around the world and will forever be in the fabric of our beings and into our spirit world one day. That was very nice, Becky. Thank you very much. This comment is from Cricket Pitts, and Cricket says, My favorite song by Steve is... I Stand Alone, Missing You, Mother, Father, really anything he sings. No, I never got to see him live. It's always been a dream of mine. My gosh, I would have his face on my pillowcase, LOL. I'm 67 now and would still love to see him. He still has his beautiful voice. Thank you, Cricket. These next comments are from Rene. He knows my name. 
The very first time I heard Journey was Lights, back in 1978, and it's been my favorite ever since. I just didn't know who the singer was or who the band was. It wasn't until 1980 when I was introduced to them, and I've been a classic Journey fan ever since. However, I would have to say I love Still They Ride studio version. There's just something about that song that I love. Another song that never made it on any of Steve's solo albums is Congratulations Baby. It sounds so personal, so private, and yet so loving. I've been told that Congratulations Baby is leaked audio. And sometimes I wish that Steve would clean it up and release it. Hands down, the 1981 Escape album. New band, new sound. I've been so grateful to have seen Journey in 1983 in Houston, Texas. They played three sold-out shows, and my best friend and I saw them two of the three. And then in 1986, also in Houston. And then I saw Perry for his very first solo tour in Fort Worth, Texas. I'm sad to say that I never met the guy, but hoping one day I will. The Astrodome is Houston's pride and joy. Journey played there back in 1982. I think it was called the Texas Jam with the likes of Sammy Hagar, Joan Jett, Santana, and another group, Journey, was the headliner, of course. Thank you, Renee. The next comment is from Cindy Brooks, and it goes like this. I saw a lot of concerts in the 70s and the 80s and had the pleasure of seeing Journey with Steve Perry in 1983. That was a great concert to be at, Cindy. Thank you for that. These comments are from Nora Lancaster. I saw them twice, once at the Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado in 1979. They were with the Eagles on their first farewell tour. Then at the Texas World Music Festival in Dallas in 1982. I wanted to go to more, but relationships and kids kind of stymied that. Anyway, I agree with you. Arnell can act like Steve Perry all he wants, but that doesn't make him Steve Perry. They were in Houston the other night, and I heard some VJ saying, if you missed the Journey concert tonight, you really missed a good show. Heck, if you missed a concert with Steve, you missed an unbelievable show. Thank you, Norma. This comment is from Jesse Long. I saw him solo in 1994 at the Tower in Philadelphia and at Hershey. I also saw the band in 1986 in Philadelphia. Thank you for that story, Jesse. This comment is from Jean Lizzie, and Jean writes, I remember first becoming aware of who Steve Perry was when O. Sherry and Foolish Heart were on MTV. I knew his earlier work with Journey, but I wasn't very music savvy and didn't even know who the lead singer of Journey was back then but I remember really liking his solo singles a lot, especially Foolish Heart. I also remember really liking Separate Ways, Who's Crying Now, and Open Arms, among others, back then. But I didn't really even know who sang them. Oh, I really discovered Steve Perry in about 2014, and I started watching videos on YouTube and became obsessed when I saw the 1981 Houston mother-father performance. I might say that was my favorite song sung by Steve Perry. 
but there are so many that I really can't choose one. But for me, that song is one of the most impressive. I became a huge fan in 2014, and I have embarrassed myself with my family with my new obsession. Escape is my favorite Journey album, as well as my favorite Anybody album. I have never gone to a Journey concert with Steve Perry or a solo concert either, but I went to see Journey with Armel in 2017. The other four members at that time were what they called the classic lineup. It was really good, but I would love to have seen Journey back in the Steve Perry days. I wasn't much of a concert goer being from a small town. Well, thank you, Gene. That's a good story. These comments are from a dear friend, Barb Anna Lee, and she has an amazing story to tell. Forrest McDonald. Hey, Forrest. So good to hear from you, my friend. I would absolutely love to help in any way I can for Steve. He's my favorite. This is a hard question. I love them all so much. Let me really think about my favorite. I first heard Steve when I was 11 or 12 years old at a friend's house. Her mom was listening to Evolution and Love and Touch and Squeezin' was playing. I asked her, who was that singing? And she showed me the album, and I was in love. I listened to the whole album and became a Steve Perry Journey fan. Since this time, I've listened to Steve daily. I knew I had just heard the greatest singer ever. My parents listen to Elvis all the time. I like Elvis, but I love Steve. I love all his solo albums. I never did get the privilege to see him and perform with Journey, but I did get to see him on the For the Love of Strange Medicine tour. I saw him perform at the Bradley Theater in Tulsa, Oklahoma on March 7th, 1995. He was absolutely phenomenal and the best concert and performance I had ever seen. So much passion. I have never had the privilege to meet him. I tried after the concert. This roadie told me he was coming out and I stood there waiting. After about two hours of the rain, I finally realized he had already left. So I finally left. Hey, I'd do it again if I thought I had a chance. When Steve came back with Traces, I was so freaking happy. You see, I suffer from PTSD and a traumatic brain injury and several other physical conditions due to my military career. I'm a disabled veteran. Steve's voice and music have carried me through my life. I don't know what I would do if I couldn't hear him. His voice pulls me out of a panic attack and calms me, especially if I have a seizure. So yeah, he's special to me and very important. I would love to see him perform live one more time. That is one of my favorites by him, One More Time. It's on for the Love of Strange Medicine album. I do listen to Don't Stop Believin' daily. Such a treasure and so inspirational. Two, oh, and I'm just a small town girl for real. A little town called Porter, Oklahoma. Famous for its peaches. I've wanted to give up so many times, but I can't. Steve won't let me. What a lifesaver. Thank you, Steve. Forrest, I hope I've helped. I can tell you that I have a beautiful lighter case that was made for me out of toothpicks. It has the evolution symbol and journey written on it. It's like it's written on the Frontier album. It's a beautiful piece. I would really like to gift it to Steve, but I'm too afraid that someone would open the fan mail and take it. I've held on to it 
all of these years hoping to gift it to Steve, but I gave up on it. It is really beautiful and means a lot to me. That person that made this has passed away, so it's hard to part with it and not know if Steve would even get it. I can say that Stay Alive is the most beautiful song I have ever heard, and I love it. Forrest, I really hope I've helped. Have a beautiful day, my friend. I wish you the very same, my friend. These comments are from Plaquin, Pat Williams, another huge Steve Perry supporter. Hi Forrest, I'm Pat Williams, and I appreciate how quickly you sent my CD of yours that includes the amazing It's Over. And I have been listening since I rediscovered the voice on March 13th, 2021, as I walked through the commissary military grocery store in the Memphis area. Oh, Sherry was playing. I got home to D.C., pulled out the Journey Greatest Hits Live that Steve put together, and I've been buying and listening ever since. In fact, the powerful Lovin' Touchin' Squeezin' is playing right now as I finish my workout. And two others, the Jazzy Groovy I Believe and Listen to Your Heart are just wonderful. Also love his recent collaboration with Clannad and Mindy Abair. As you discovered before many of us, the man's talents has no limits. He's truly gifted, of course, which his mom saw and recognized early on. What a powerful testament to the magic that is music. Forrest, I have so many favorites. However, what I want to, f however, what I find myself playing most often. Stay a while, live in Houston, November 6, 1981. For the love of strange medicine, can't let you go with Jeff Golub. It's over with yours truly. Wheel in the sky, Dixie Highway, homemade love. Who's crying now? Stone in love, and I'll be all right without you. But the Toronto live version, where he does a few amazing rhythm and blues covers, truly phenomenal. Sadly, I never saw him live, solo, or group. And what is interesting is that I was stationed in San Diego right before he left Journey. And again, I was stationed in Monterey in 1994-95. to 95. Of course, I am forever grateful to those who've recorded and posted videos. My favorite Journey album is Departure, and solo is Street Talk. But that's hard because I absolutely love the season and for the love of Strange Medicine, the album. And alas, I have never met his musical genius, but I'm very thankful for the way in which his piercing writings and emotional song delivery touches my soul to its very core. And yes, I voted and recommended him to all for which I see. I hope you enjoy a wonderful evening and a great first Juneteenth holiday weekend. Never, ever stop believing. Then I told her about my idea to do this video, and she came back and said, Forrest, I think that's a fabulous idea. And he's seemingly as humble as he is talented. So I think Steve would be pleased to hear how much we are very much still here. And he too has spoken of the universal language of music and how it can literally save you. Well done, my friends. Well done. Thanks for that so much, Pat. This comment is from Thomas Burroughs, and this is what he says. Thank you, Forrest, for this great story. It is just fantastic music. Best wishes to you, sir. Favorite song? Faithfully. 
For me, there's something pure about this song. Steve absolutely poured his heart out in the lyrics and vocals. I really relate to this song because I spend many months working on the road away from wife and miss her terribly. On my trip home, I stream this as the last song and time it to end as I back into my driveway at the end of my trip. The line, I get the joy of rediscovering you, catches me in the throat. I love it. Favorite album, Escape. This album is a great example of catching lightning in a bottle. Every song on it is excellent. I've not been able to see them live. In 1982, while visiting my grandparents out in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, I was 13 at the time. My uncle, who was 20 at the time, was going to see them at the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit and wanted to take me. I begged my mom to please let me go. She absolutely would not let me go. I was so damn disappointed and frustrated. Have I ever met Steve? Unfortunately, I have not. Sure, would love to, though. As far as recognition by the Kennedy Center, I absolutely and wholeheartedly support that idea. Forrest, I wish you continued success and long, healthy life. You're a good man. I love your channel and your multi-decade scope of work. Tom Burroughs. Thank you for that, Tom. And I'm sorry that your mom didn't let you go to the show. These next comments are from Noriko Tak from Japan, and she has seen Steve perform 14 times. That's the record from all the fans that I've gotten so far. And here is what she writes. Before I begin, let me set the table for Noriko's comment. I had mentioned to her that I was translating all of the videos and the text and description into 15 different languages, including Japanese. So she replied, Hi Forrest, the translation settings you made seem to shine. Because I'm not an English speaker, and while I can manage the text with the help of a translation app, I can barely understand when listening. If there are no settings, I take a screenshot, translate the file into Japanese with the translation app, and finally understand. This way takes a lot of time. So I'm really grateful and thank you for the translation options you gave. Well, I will answer your questions. What is my favorite Steve song? There are so many songs I like, both band and solo, that it is really hard to choose. Recently, my brain often plays patiently and captured by the moment. If acceptable, I choose the Eels song he sang at the Eels concert when he jumped in. Also, the phrase he was in charge of in We Are the World. Favorite album? It's difficult to choose one. I have strong feelings about Infinity, Raised on Radio. The band performance? Yes, I saw them 14 times in total. The best concert at Shubia Koyado 79-418 on their first visit to Japan. ROR New Year's Eve Concert 86 12 31 Long Beach Arena. Have you ever met Steve? No, I never met Steve. I will do my best to give Kennedy Center honors, even though I'm just a tiny force. Thank you very, very much, Nariko from Japan. And I have to say, of all the comments that I got, about 900, she has seen Journey the most. 
14 times. Can you imagine? And she's got a great sense of humor. Thank you very, very much. That's really cool. Thank you, Noriko, from Japan. I really appreciate your comment. These next comments are from Deborah Forbes, and Deborah writes, Forrest, I did have an opportunity to sing with Steve for a movie. It was a very interesting experience because near the end, we wanted to kill each other. <laughs> Personally, he's a very passionate guy. Nothing but love and respect for him. He gives 110% in everything he does. My favorite album would have to be For the Love of Strange Medicine. So many tracks with different vocal styles. Also, Traces. He really deserves that honor. That's the KCH honor that I did a special video on. Deborah, thank you for that. And I know firsthand that Steve is a perfectionist. And I'll tell you what, after working with him, I wouldn't trade that for anybody who settles for mediocrity. Thanks again, Deborah. These comments are from a fellow Texan, Edie Carter. I have seen them at the Astrodome, but I met him at the summit. They played the Texas Jam at the Astrodome in the early 80s. All of the other times were at the summit, with the exception of once in Dallas, where my extended family lives. Wow! My favorite song, I think, is probably City of the Angels. There are so many to choose from, so I might have missed a couple. What's your favorite? It can be Journey or Solo Steve. Try it. Pick one. The best show was either the Escape Tour, which I saw four times, or the Raised on Radio Tour. I can't pick one. Steve is my very favorite performer of all time. I have mentioned to you before that I was fortunate enough to meet him in 1983. He was so nice to me. He sealed his place in my heart forever. He was so compassionate to me. He knew that I was about to cry and told me, it's okay, and then he hugged me. That memory means so much to me. I can say firsthand that he is a great guy. I fell madly in love. Everything that you described is something that I witnessed. His energy and passion stand out for me. It's nice of you to share your moments of Steve with his fans. We cherish any thoughts that you have with us to be able to understand our idol more. We already know he's awesome, but to have it affirmed by a close friend just makes it better. I also have mentioned that I too am from Texas. I heard him in an interview once, one time, that his favorite places to perform were Detroit and Houston. He said he could feel the love from the audience. I never missed the show in Houston. If Steve was in town, I could feel the electricity in the air. It was a magical time, the 80s. You mentioned the cutie story. I remember a time when he talked about some frat boys calling him gorgeous. He wanted so badly to tell them to F off. But there were too many of them, and he was alone. How frustrating that must be. They've got the right to act like jerks, but they don't respect your right to have nice hair. They're jealous. Who's getting all the girls? I know. Thank you, Edie. That was a great story. Gail Simmons is our next contributor to today's video. I can't pick just one song or album, but I will tell you that the song I Am has been my anthem song. I never got to see Journey live back in the day because the tickets would sell out quick. It would have been sweet to have the internet then to purchase tickets. I've seen Journey with Arnell three times and nothing against Arnell, but it is just not the same. Yes, I have met Steve at a private event in 2019. That is Steve and I in my profile pic. Steve is an amazing person. 
He's the real deal. Funny as heck, generous, made us feel like we were sitting around talking to an old friend. Extremely humble. And I had an awesome conversation with him when we had the meet and greet and photo op after the initial interviews. I had an opportunity to talk with him for a while about music, all aspects of it. But I also had an opportunity to tell him that I finally sat down and picked up a guitar for the first time and that I was teaching myself. To make a long story short, he said to follow my heart because he could see and hear how much love and passion I have for music. He made me promise that no matter how difficult or frustrating learning how to play the guitar is, to never give up. The event at Mamos and Mimosas was in Providence, Rhode Island, and took place in October 2019. I had just lost my mother to Alzheimer's that August, so meeting Steve in October was a healing process I can't even put into words. I still think my mother had something to do with me finding out and going to this event because she knew how much I loved Steve Perry and Journey. Steve was very generous with our one-on-one -on -one time. I will always be grateful for that. I'm a transplant from New York City and I live in Florida now and Steve could not believe that I traveled all the way from Florida to Rhode Island just to meet him. I told Steve that I loved him so much and admired him for so long I would have crawled there. Before I left, he gave me a hug and told me once again, remember, don't give up. And as I walked away, I told him, look for me on YouTube, for I will learn to play all of your music and that I hope to make him proud. October 2019 is still the best day ever. That, sir, is my story. Well, congratulations, Gail. That's a wonderful story. Sherry Donica has written a very nice comment, and it reads as follows. Of course, the most favorite song Steve sings is Oh Sherry. No need for that extra E at the end. He didn't realize how I spelled it. I have to tell the story of Steve calling me back to music with Missing You. For many years, I had been blocking music. For one thing, the lyrics of Many Concerning Love were quite misleading, and the painful memories of heartbreaks those songs evoked was another. About a year ago, a beautiful melody broke through my wall. I had started working at a store that has overhead music playing, and occasionally something would start to get through, but I had gotten pretty good at pushing it away and really didn't usually hear it. This day, though, a song I had never heard before broke through and literally made me stop and listen to its melody. It just kept pulling me closer. I was captivated. There's no other word for it. I couldn't not listen. And then the voice. It was so beautiful and something I just had to pay attention to hear what song was all about. I actually stopped what I was doing in the middle of the aisle to focus. And somewhere along this almost times topping moment, I thought that voice, it sounds like Steve. I had to know. So I pulled out my phone and had to hurry and pull out Shazam out of the cloud. As soon as I got the information, I put my phone back in my pocket and got back to work. Seeing how is we really were not supposed to be on our phones at work. As soon as I got home, though, I went into a deep dive on everything Steve. I have all of his solo stuff on iTunes on my phone and a few from his journey days also. I didn't realize what a fan I was of his until this. 
I do remember that a friend had talked me into going to one of those concerts on the green where multiple 80s bands come together sometime in the 2000s. It was Def Leppard, Poison, and Journey with that other Steve. I remembered that we left while Journey was playing because I found it extremely frustrating to hear them without the right voice. Back to now. I've looked for everything Steve I can find and found that my appreciation for him goes much deeper than just his musical talent. I've come to deeply respect and admire him and his character. My favorite album is probably his greatest hits album, but honestly, I usually just set my iTunes to Steve Perry and let it play through. Then jump over to my Journey songs for a bit, and then back to Steve's solo. I've never gotten to meet him, and a crowd autograph thing would only frustrate me. I would love so much to sit down with him and really get to know him. I heard him once say in an interview that he knew who Steve Perry was once he left the band, that lots of people were even willing to tell him but he had to get away to find out who Steve was. I'd love to do that too. Well, I've got to tell you, I really appreciate your comment. Thank you very much, Sherry. Kathy Dictos has been with me from the beginning of the Old Time Rock and Roller series. And here is what Kathy has to say. He achieved everything he set out to do a dedicated musician who continues today. Never stop, Steve Perry. Forrest, 1975, was a great time for both of you. All those old songs were the best. He has a great falsetto. Forrest, I really like all your stories. You bring it all back to life like it was just yesterday. Thanks for the memories. Forrest, you are a natural at this storytelling. Keep the time machine going. I used to go to the Monterey Jazz Festivals. Thank you for sharing, Forrest. You won't believe this, but Barry Gibb was just asking some of his Facebook followers who we were listening to today, and I told him you and your stories. Forrest, you should have been in Journey with Steve. It's never too late. You can both start touring together. Did you ever get to see the radio station in Hanford, KIGS? I've been by there. Raised on Radio, to me, was such a beautiful album. I haven't heard every song since he's made quite a few, and they were all great. But lately, I have been enjoying his new releases, Traces and Traces Alternative Versions and Sketches. I saw him perform at the beginning of his career in San Francisco many years ago and also with Journey. I'm a Giants fan and saw him at a game but never met him. Regarding your video, Steve Perry, Kennedy Center Honor nomination, Forrest McDonald SP Legacy. That's very kind of you. Forrest, you're such a good friend to Steve. I nominated Steve to the Kennedy Center Honors. Great idea. I admire what you're doing, and it's always nice to see your videos. Your video was more engrossing to me than watching the Oscars last night, and this Oscar goes to Forrest. Well, Kathy, thank you very much for everything. The next comments are from Joanne Justice. I can still remember the first time I heard Journey driving my 71 Camaro in the summer during the 70s. Been addicted ever since. Now, my 22-year-old granddaughter is. Well, thank you very much, Joanne. I remember that 71 Camaro. It was a hot car. Stephen Randolph wrote this. I started listening to Journey in the 70s with my mom when I was around seven years of age, and I love the original Journey still to this day. When I was in my 20s, 
in the 90s, every one trip that I would put Journey on right after something like Alice in Chains, they never understood the power of Mr. Stephen Perry. Well stated, Stephen Randolph. Thank you for your comment. Jane Beattie provides us with this next comment. I had the pleasure of seeing Steve perform on three occasions. He is the only artist I have seen who exceeded his studio versions. Thank you, Jane. I agree. Shauna gives us the next comment, and it reads as follows. May brought my first Journey album. In 1977, I was 18. I remember when my boyfriend played Wheels in the Sky, cranking it up. Our walls were vibrating. Our upstairs neighbor told us he enjoyed it too. Thank you, Shauna. That was a great story. Our next comment is from Samantha L. I have just recently started to listen to Journey and Steve Perry's solo albums after hearing my dad play some of their songs every now and then. My gosh, they are incredible. I love, love, love Perry's voice so much. I just watched a YouTube video of It's Over, and his voice is absolutely beautiful in it. Even from a teen in the 21st century, Steve Perry is my favorite artist, including his newest album. He still has it. Well, thank you very much, Samantha. And I wrote that song back in 1975. Iva Wise is a very big Steve supporter, and here's what Iva wrote. Escape is my favorite album. It really showcased his vocals. One of my favorite songs would be When You Love a Woman. I could feel his passion. Can't stop there. So another would be Noah Rayson and Still They Ride. And of course, Stone in Love. Thank you very much, Iva, for that comment. Shonda D. wrote this. My favorite song is hard to choose. Open Arms. Winds of March, When You Love a Woman, Message of Love, Colors of the Spirit, and most of all, Missing You. I never met Steve. I was unable to go to any of his concerts. I was a young mom with two babies at the time he was performing. Well, I'm sorry you didn't get to see him, Shonder, but at least you got to hear him. Thank you for your nice comment. Lisa N.Z. followed Patricia Bloomer's quote, with these nice words. Patricia, my friend, this is absolutely fantastic of Forrest McDonald to help Steve the voice. Perry's admirers worldwide. You and I included to get him the honor he so deserves, especially considering that Forrest McDonald knows Steve the voice Perry personally. Well, thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. These next comments are from Patricia Bloomer, or Pat, or Patty, and Pat writes the following. As page owner of Steve Perry Legacy, I can't thank you enough for your support. We have worked diligently to get Steve nominated for various awards. We believe in supporting his music and humanitarian efforts, which is a part of our mission statement. Thank you again, and thank you to everyone who has nominated Steve. Note that you can vote more than once by using different devices, phone, tablet, or computer. Forrest, you are just too awesome. I go by Pat, Patty, or Patricia, but mostly Pat. People call me whatever they feel more comfortable with. <laughs> Again, I would like to extend the warmest welcome to join our group to see firsthand what we are all about. We nominated Steve for the Songwriters Hall of Fame, sent songs to the Library of Congress, working with the Smithsonian and others. Thank you again for everything you have done to help Steve. He truly deserves the recognition. 
Steve Perry just did a remake of Clannad White Fool. Would you ever consider doing a remake with one of the songs you did with Steve? Well, of course I would. After watching your video titled Forrest MacDonald Band Writing and Recording Songs for Blues in a Bucket and Steve Perry KCH Update. Damn, Forrest, that's all I can say. Thank you for your continued support of Steve. I got this CD on order and should have it soon. I've been listening to you today on Spotify. Peace and love. Forrest, I have to say, my favorite album, if I had to pick one, would be Strange Medicine. I love everything about that era. His sound, his look, the music. I have a go-to song, which is Somewhere There's Hope. That song helped me immensely going through my father's passing in 2017. It also helps me now when I'm feeling blue. Steve's music hits all of us in different ways and at different times. He sings those words we cannot speak. Our group trip to Hanford proved just that. Nine girls who had never met got together because of Steve. We shared a house together and some a room together. It felt like we had known each other forever. One in particular came out of her shy shell and blossomed like a rose. Others shared their personal stories one-on-one -on -one, and had very deep conversations. We talked about Steve and saw all the historical sites in Hanford and around Hollywood. We followed the We're Still Here video path with very detailed sites of interest. We sang Steve songs, watched videos, got a little naughty, <laughs> and had a blast. We're already planning next year's trip to Hanford. These friendships will last a lifetime and are all because we love Steve's passion, his emotions, his vocal abilities, and his humanitarian efforts, which we try to emulate. I don't know of any better fans than Steve Perry fans. Thank you for that story, Pat. I really appreciate it. If I've pronounced anyone's name incorrectly, I apologize. It's not easy being me. But I thank you for watching. This will conclude the first part of this musical moment. Steve, I hope you are watching and understand that you have millions of people who you've touched their heart greatly and appreciate you and your humanitarian efforts, your singing, your charisma, your kindness, so thank you, brother. If you like the content you're hearing and you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Give me a thumbs up and the stories will keep rolling. I need your fuel to light my fire to send these words, one voice to the voice. Mr. Steve Perry, keep love in your heart, a song in your head. Don't stop believing and I will see you on the next Musical Moments. So long, my friends.